back, friends and family. It's hard to believe it's the start of another school year. That means we're jumping back into our family time, social, emotional learning. Why do we do this? I'm a big proponent of emotional intelligence being the most significant form of intelligence. And sometimes we don't always focus on that in school. But your emotional intelligence is directly related to success in anything you want to do in your life. As always, we're focusing on the castle social emotional learning competencies. And we're starting off with self-awareness. That's really where we have to start with all this stuff. It's hard to know anything else about life and your place in it if you don't understand yourself a little bit. And if nothing else, I would like you to walk away from my room, from our school, having a stronger understanding of who you are and how you fit into the world, what you stand for, what you believe in. And we'll talk more about those things later. The first thing we're doing is we're looking at your story a little bit. It's good to know where we've been if we want to direct where we're going next, to understand the chapters that have been written so we can write the rest of our stories. I want you to do that or start doing that by considering the most influential moments or eras of your life. For you students who are younger, it might be significant moments, significant occurrences. For me, I'm a little older than you, I can kind of think of periods of my life. And I don't necessarily want you to think about biographical information. I don't want you to think of surface level things of like just what happened in that time period. But I want you to really think about how those experiences have shaped who you are. That's a big part of self-awareness, of understanding how different experiences, how your background and that's kind of a nature versus nurture thing. It's really a little bit of both. Understanding or at least considering how your experiences have shaped how you think about things, how you feel about things, how you might be biased toward different things. So I've gone through the exercise to sort of to demonstrate and it, this is good stuff for me to do as well. So I kind of broke my life up into five eras. And if you have four or five things, that's perfect. That's a great place to start. So for me, the first era of my life, I put from zero to 11 years old, and I call that North End. Here's my little, little sheet. I wrote it all down on there, the, the different eras of my life. I put North End. I've talked about this before in class. I grew up on the North End of Mason City. For a lot of you, that's kind of the sketchier part of Mason City that you uh, maybe don't stop at the gas station, those sorts of things. Well, that's the exact neighborhood I grew up in. And it's really, I don't think, as bad as it's made out to be by some people who live in our small area, our small town. For me, it was really a wonderful place to grow up. It was a great place to have a childhood. But as I look back, I consider how it may be influenced the things that I care about, how I think about things. The first thing that I wrote down under North End is family. I was very fortunate. One, I was fortunate to have my wonderful immediate family. My parents lived in a nuclear family. I had my two younger brothers. We got to do a lot of stuff together. That was huge. And where I grew up, that wasn't a thing that all the kids that all my friends had. The other part of family is I'm from a, a very big family. My mom is one of 14 kids. In fact, my maternal grandparents had 14 of their own kids and then at different times brought in 10 foster kids as well. And while I was growing up, at least, pretty much all of us lived in the north end of Mason City within blocks of each other. And we did everything together. Every cousin birthday party, every activity, it was an incredible way to grow up. And I can look back now that I have a big family, have six kids, and, and see how that influenced me and how that feels normal to me. And that's such a wonderful thing. 
family is really the most important thing to me. And I think it was presented as the most important thing when I was a kid. I'm very grateful for that. But I think of other ways that I was influenced by the way I grew up. I think of independence. Sometimes I can be a, <laughs> I call it a, a sometimes violently independent person that I'm like, uh, I sometimes get stuck in my ways. I have my way of doing things. I sometimes feel like I don't need help from other people, even when I do. So there's good and bad to that. It's great to be independent and be self-sufficient, but I realize sometimes uh, that has caused strain in different relationships that I've had too. But I was, I got to grow up in that way and my parents were involved and my mom was always trying to keep tabs on me, but a little different era, a little different environment where I could be, go to a friend's house. We could be gone for the day, riding our bikes around Mason City, doing stuff on our own, maybe doing some things we shouldn't have been doing that could have been dangerous. But I think that really formed in me a sense of independence. Another thing I think about is I wrote down rich kid, poor kid. I went to Hoover Elementary School in Mason City, great elementary school, but it was kind of a, a funny blend. You had a lot of North End kids, me and my friends, and then it's kind of on the northwest corner of Mason City. So you had some kids who lived like down by the hospital and the nicer houses who their parents were doctors and things like that. And it was this weird blend. And I remember experiencing for the first time, like when I would maybe go to a friend's birthday party who wasn't a North End kid, who didn't run around the neighborhood with us. And they lived in nice houses and a nice housing development. And that was kind of my first introduction to like, oh, this is, this is different here. And my folks who always worked super hard, they both worked jobs, sometimes multiple jobs, so we could make ends meet and so that my brothers and I could do the things we wanted to do. And I'm very grateful for that. But I think I still have to this day kind of that, like I say, poor kid mentality. I wouldn't necessarily say we were poor, but we were, you know, we had to struggle to get by sometimes or money was tight sometimes. And a lot of people that I grew up with maybe, you know, had less than us. And I, and I saw those things a lot. And you know, sometimes I still get uncomfortable with like money or even our family. My wife and I, we were able to buy this great, you know, big house for our family. And man, when we first did, I felt really uncomfortable about it, like, like almost anxious about it because I was like, ah, this is getting to be like rich kid stuff. And, and I don't know, I'm not very comfortable with that. So, so I know I still have some of that, that creates some biases that I have. But I also think that really instilled in me the number one thing that's helped me accomplish things in my life, which is just work ethic. Because I saw it from my parents. I saw it from other people in our neighborhood who were working and struggling and, and had, to, had to think about money and had to put in the hours and did blue collar stuff and those sorts of things. So that really influenced who I am and the way I do things. The next section of my life is from 11 to 18. I put STA, St. Ansgar. I'm super fortunate to live back here where I went to high school. But at 11 years old, going into sixth grade, my family decided to move to St. Ansgar. We didn't know anybody here. There was no connection. My dad was still working at Mason City. There was no real reason for us to move here other than my parents wanted to get us out of the the neighborhood we were living in, the environment we were living in, and wanted to give us a, a different experience, more opportunities maybe. And I always tell them it was the single best decision they ever made for us, for me and my brothers. I got experienced, I got exposed to a lot of different things here. I got to experience a strong culture and I got to hopefully help build that culture while in school. And it was one of the reasons I wanted to come back here and raise my kids here. And I got exposed to a lot of things that became lifelong interests of mine. I never played football, didn't even know the rules, the positions till I was in eighth grade. First time I played football, I wound up playing in college, coached it and all that ever since became a huge part of who I am. And really that time period set the trajectory of my life. I don't know how I would have turned out. A lot of the people that I grew up with wound up 
in jail, on drugs, dead. I don't know that I would have fallen into that, but I'm certain my life wouldn't be what it is if we hadn't moved to St. Ansgar. And that's including having wonderful teachers and wonderful coaches who inspired me and encouraged me to go into education and get to do something that I love every day. The next section of my life, I put from 18 to 28, and I call it growing up, question mark. Because this was the time period where, man, from in that time, for a lot of people, and certainly for me, 18 to 28 or somewhere in your mid-20s, you're making a lot of life decisions. You know, it was going to college, picking what I wanted to do for a career. I, I was fairly young for my grade, got through college fairly quickly. So I got hired for my first teaching job when I was 21. I would turn 22 before the school year started. But doing that, I got married at 22. Uh, I became a head football coach after my first year. So I was or after my first season. So I was still like 22. And I became a head football coach for the first time. It was like, a lot of figuring stuff out. I, I put underneath that heading trial and error. Man, it was a lot of trial and error. It was trying things. Like, for one, like being a head football coach. I thought, well, that's going to be what I want to do. I want to be a head football coach. I want to do that forever and build a big program. And I kind of found out that I, I like better like the position I have now. I like being like the defensive coordinator. I like having some authority over my little corner of something, but I didn't really like the administrative side of being a head coach. I didn't really, I didn't really want to have to talk to the media and deal with all the equipment, do that. I love coaching. I love working with, with young people. So I kind of found out like, man, that's maybe not exactly what I thought it was going to be. And my first experience in teaching was a great experience, but it was a little different culture than we have here. And for a while, I was like, geez, I'm not sure if this is what I want to do either. So I actually even went back to grad school. That's when I got my master's degree in sports science. Uh, my first wife and I, that's when we had our first two kids, Mickey and Claire. And that was just like, it was like checking the boxes of being a grown up. You know, that's what you do. You, you get the career, you get married, you have kids, you, you find out what you do for the rest of your life. And it was a lot of really great stuff every stage of my life, a lot of really great stuff, but then some stuff too, where I'm like, Ooh, this isn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. Then my next section of life, I put growing up like period, not growing up question mark, growing up for real. And that for me was 28 to 37. A lot of things happened in that time frame for me. One, uh, 28 years old is when I got sick. I know some of you know about that, but I had a bunch of surprise health things. I had a bacterial infection, a bunch of other stuff that uh, led to several surgeries and going to a bunch of different doctors for a long time, about four years. I was a patient at University of Iowa hospitals and the Mayo Clinic and all that sort of thing. During that same time period, wound up getting divorced and uh, you know, having Mickey and Claire go between two different households and figuring out how to do that, you know, how to do a, a co-parenting thing in different households and, and trying to figure out what's best for the kids and, and trying to figure out what happens in life when everything that you, that you thought you were going to do and everything you had planned kind of changes. So for me, that was like the for real growing up experience. And from that, I'm very, very grateful for it have no hard feelings about it because I gained so much perspective and I learned what was really valuable to me. And, and I learned to cut out a lot of the stuff that was like, had to do with ego and that wasn't real significant. I'm still working on all of those things, believe me, but that really, really helped me shape like what I truly value, who I truly am things that I, that I thought I was pretty solid on. But then I was like, oh, man, no, this like this needs some work and you need to, to reflect on those things. A big point of reflection. And it, it helped me kind of uh, set the compass to the other stages of my life. And I would say I, I did a lot of that from the time I was like 28 to 32. But I extend that period out to about like 37 where I was like, like, OK, that's uh, 
you know, it was, it was figuring things out. And then I put from 37 to, to now to hopefully for a long time for right now, I put it as payoff. Maybe someday later I'll think of it as a different era and there'll be some other stage in my life. But uh, payoff to me is like, geez, I think I'm, I'm happier than I ever thought that I could be in my life. Where it's like, gee, I get to wake up every day and go to a job that I love. Most people don't get to do that. I have this big, amazing family. I'm, I'm remarried to... The love of my life, we have four other kids, including Mickey and Claire, so it's six kids, and it's this big, like, happy family that we certainly have things that we have to deal with and issues and attitudes and feelings and all those sorts of things, but it, like, harkens back to my first experiences in life where I was like, this is what it's all about. And there's a lot of things that I'm still learning. That's a big part of this stage of my life, too, especially with... Uh, kids, a lot of whom are, you know, most of whom are girls, have five daughters. Like, man, that's a lot of like emotions and things to, to sort out. But I think it makes me a lot better as a person too. So that's kind of the stage of life I'm in now. Now I've talked a lot. I won't make all the family times this long, but I want you to spend a little time up front this year really thinking about that. Thinking about your story to now and understand you are the author of your story. So you got to know what came first to decide how you want the next chapters to go. And you get to write them. You really do. You can't control everything. But there are a lot of things in your life you can't control. And you can decide how you're going to respond to things and how you're going to use the things that happen in your life, including the challenging things, to shape your future. All right, enough rambling for me today. Sorry this one's a little long. I'm just super excited to be back in school with everybody. Much love.